Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Clues, Secrets, and Spies from Hasbro. This is for two to six players, ages nine plus. It'll take you, I don't know, about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And in Clues, Secrets, and Spies, you are no longer trying to solve murder mysteries. Now, for some reason, you've all become top secret globe traveling agents going to Tokyo and Berlin and Paris and all sorts of other different locations for some reason trying to gather guns and laptops and diamonds not really sure what the theme is in this one but you're going to be playing as secret agents you're going to have your own secret identity you're going to be trying to score points for yourself at the same time uh not revealing who you are even though it's not the end of the world if people figure out who you are uh, it has some interesting scoring it's got this cool little flashlight that you can look at cards that otherwise you couldn't look at and it even had like a really cool concept which unfortunately i can't show you where they would send you text messages during the game it feels like a wildly ambitious mass market family slash uh kids kind of game does it succeed though interesting game nonetheless let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Clues, Secrets, and Spies. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It is 15 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. And it's very well done. It should have you up and running in no time. And also, big thumbs up on the rule booklet. Also, you're going to get this uh, not-so-nice desk, desk jet printed paper. Like, yes, this is literally just a piece of paper that's printed off that's going to help tell you how to use the top secrets and spies add text messages to your game thing so they had this idea where uh you would you would essentially text this number and then four times throughout the game the game would text you and they would do something that would change up the game or mix something up or do something crazy unfortunately i never got to experience this because they say on the back we're going to hold up these servers until 12 31 2011 and currently i'm uh seven years off of that and the servers are no longer up so i can't speak to that i wish i could because the kids were super excited to see how it worked i was as well but unfortunately it's not up, but I can talk about the base game and how that works. So in Clues, Secrets, and Spies, what you're going to be doing is you're going to try to be the top spy by the end of the game. The game is going to end when any of these score markers meets with the black score marker. And the black score marker will start at the very end top i'll explain that a little bit later and we'll go through some of the actions and show you how it works but let's go over the components and we'll get into the gameplay so component wise you got our board up here you're gonna have this big map of the world and there's gonna be uh these routes and you'll be moving characters along these routes to get to different locations to do various different things be that picking up things like jewels and guns and laptops and microchips or having top secret meetings like this first meeting is in moscow and i'll explain that all a little bit later but what you need to know is the map there's also a bunch of these little pieces these are the uh the secret agents and this one is the blue one so that lines up with agent peacock which coincidentally would be my secret identity i'll explain that a little bit later you have the yellow which is mustard the red which is scarlet so on and so forth you get the idea you can move anyone not just your piece you can move anyone and that's the big theme of the game you're going to be scoring points for everyone not just for yourself down here is essentially where you're going to be placing your cards to do actions and when you place down a card you're going to do actions for that character so if i placed a card here on agent mustard i would be doing an action for agent mustard even if i am not agent mustard um next you're gonna have cards cards and more cards over here there's four different types of cards first everyone's going to have a secret identity card i am peacock which should be blue but in theory is purple which is annoying but i'll talk more about that in pros and cons this is your secret identity you want to keep it well secret but it's not a huge deal if it comes out you're just going to lose a couple points here and there but uh yeah everyone has their own secret identity no one's going to be trying to guess or anything like that like you don't get points for guessing who anyone is but everyone has a secret identity next you are going to have a mission and this is one of the two ways you'll be able to score points in this game if at any point during your turn uh any one of the agents has the two items on your mission card then you can say oh and i'm scoring this mission so let's just say that uh agent white had this and uh, the briefcase and we were the where the heck's the briefcase uh yeah briefcase then agent white would actually score a point and then i would keep put this in my score pile and i would score a point at the end of the game so there's points being scored during the game and there's points being scored at the end of the game and then you would draw another one of those cards uh the other kind of cards you're going to get are the action cards and these are really the star of the show on your turn you are always going to be playing one of these and then drawing one of these and they will tell you to move people or switch cities with another agent then 
So normally they're going to deal with something that pertains to movement, and then they're going to deal with something that pertains to these items down here, either swapping items or giving away items or stealing items, and those are always optional. You don't have to do it. Uh, that is all of the cards. Oh, except for the super cool other way to score points, which are the secret meetings. And how the secret meetings work are that you have to meet in Moscow. So you're going to move a character, and when you move a character to Moscow, so let's let's actually just run you through a turn, and I'll show you exactly how it works. So uh, I'm going first, and what I'm going to do is I am going to take control of Agent Black. Now, Agent Black's kind of an interesting one because whenever you activate Agent Black's space, you're actually going to move him down one point. Why? It's a game mechanism. doesn't really make much sense. Then I'm going to move one space, and I'll move here to Moscow. I pick up whatever item is in that space and put it on top of Agent Black, like so. And then I get to take a look at this card. Since I'm in Moscow, I get to look at this secret card. And you have to meet someone in Moscow. And you're saying, well, well... How, who am I supposed to meet? Is that white? No, actually, you get this top secret little flashlight. And then, if you shine it on there, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it with the iPad's camera. But it says Plum. Meet Plum in Moscow. Now, I obviously wouldn't want to tell anyone that. So now my goal on my next turn is to get Plum to Moscow. And if I can get Plum to Moscow, then Plum is going to score a point. And uh, another character that's on that space who I choose will also score a point. So let's say everybody else takes their own, oh, then I draw one card. Now if I wanted to, I could swap an item with another agent, but obviously no one else has anything, so I'm just gonna be done. So now the next person might go, and let's just say that they're going to uh, play this card, move one or two cities, and uh, they might do it on Agent Green, so Agent Green would go, bloop, right there to Berlin, and he'd pick that up, because maybe this person needs that, I don't know why. And then they would draw a card, and that would be the end of their turn. The next person would go. They would get to choose between Scarlet, Mustard, White, Peacock, or Plum. So once someone has activated a character for that round, no one else gets to do it. So let's just say, you know, boom, they go there, they go there, they go there, and they do stuff, and they move around, and this guy's here, and I don't know, somehow Green gets there, um, you know, whatever. Let's just say that, and then finally, bam and bam, everything's wiped out. <laughs> So once all the car so once all the spots are filled, all the cards get discarded, and you continue on your merry way. You also have these discard cards, which are incredibly unnecessary. They give you three of them. I just thought it was humorous. Uh, so let's just say it gets back to somebody else's turn. And what they decide to do, since no one for some reason has been able to meet this person in Moscow, is they're like, yeah, maybe it's Agent Plum. Maybe Agent Plum, who's right here, needs to get this. They might play Agent Plum. And they're gonna move him up. Boom, one space like that. They would take the flashlight, secretly look at it, and be like, Hi, I scored the points. I scored the points for Agent Plum. So now how this works is, Agent Plum is going to score a point, and then one of the other spies that was on there is going to score a point as well. And the person who triggered it is going to choose. So if it were me, and I'm Agent Peacock, who's not there, I would pick somebody else. But if it, let's say that it was somebody else's secret character and they had uh, Agent Scarlet, they would absolutely want... Plum and Scarlet to score. Now the scoring also is really interesting because no one can be on the same space except for Zero down here. So the, how they'd probably want to do it, assuming they were actually Agent Scarlet, is they'd want Mr. Plum to score first and then Agent Scarlet to score because he jumps one space ahead. So now the next person to score is going to, boom, go like that. So let's show you how that works. So let's say uh, next time I activate uh, Agent White and Agent White moves here and picks up the laptop. And then my mission just happened to be, oh, my mission just happened to be a gun and a laptop, which obviously it's not, it's this. But if it was that, then Agent White would score the point. Even if that person is not Agent White, they still score the point uh, for Agent White. And then at the end of the game, they'll have that card face up to let them know that they, in fact, scored a point as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to continue moving around the board, uh, getting these missions done. And once you complete a mission, these stay here. So once all the pieces are collected and down here, they, they never leave this area. They never go back up here. They just kind of get swapped around and given away and stolen and all sorts of things like that. Also, this meeting in Moscow, now that that's done, a new meeting would come out, and this time we would be going to Berlin. So you're always going to be cycling through those. There's always going to be different places to go to, in order to get the meeting. So the two ways to score points are, boom, having a meeting somewhere in which two people are always going to score, and the other way is completing the missions in which one person is going to score, uh, and then you secretly score points at the end of the game. The game will trigger its end eventually when someone... 
Uh, let's just say that uh, this happens. So let's say blue's down here, and white, yellow scores again. So yellow scores, and they would go all the way to 12, and they have now passed black, which means uh, the game is at its end. So at this point, what you're going to do is you are going to tally up and see who scored the most cards. Um, so we got four cards here. We got three cards there, whatever. Um, actually, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. Whoever has the most points is going to score their cards for first. So if yellow had four cards, then yellow would go one, two, three, four. Uh, if white had three cards, they would go one, two, three. If red had five cards, they would go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and whoever is at the top of that is going to be the winner of the game. So while blue may seem like they're out of it, if they scored a whole bunch of these cards, they could still potentially win the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Clues, Secrets, and Spies. All right, then. Clues, Secrets, and Spies from Hasbro. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. If you go into this expecting Clue, you will be disappointed. There is no deduction in this game at all. I mean... Yes, maybe just a teeny tiny weeny bit about trying to figure out who other people are, but most of the time you're not really going to be putting too much effort into that at all because most of the time people are just going to try and score. And if they can score with their person, that's an added bonus. But this game is really just about moving pieces around a board and scoring and maybe collecting the special things for your mission and scoring that. And there's no deduction in this game, really. So that will be a turnoff to some people. Also, a huge turnoff, if you find this in a thrift shop or something like that, well, you just find it at all, is that the game-changing text messages, which were printed on freaking a desk jet, um, you can't do those, which is unfortunate. Like, come on, Hasbro. Really? You're, you're probably a multi... Probably a billion-dollar company. Hasbro is probably a billion-dollar company. You can't keep the text messaging up. You can't... You can't spend the, the the two cents it's going to take to send out four text messages to the to the 30 or 50 people who are probably going to play this game a year and use the text messaging system. It's just, eh, it annoys me. Um, you know, if the flashlight batteries die, you're probably never going to replace them because it's not like it takes double A's or triple A's. It's four A76 or LR44 batteries, but they are included, so that's a pro. Uh, and make sure that that works before you buy it if you're looking at this as a thrift store purpose because you do need that to see the secret codes the secret words that are on the cards you know it's a family weight game this is not a game night game even though it does have some cool bells and whistles it is a family game and maybe an older children's game i'm not going to put it in the children's category but if you have kids age you know 11 12 13 plus they can probably play this by themselves no problem because it is a very simple game uh sometimes the scoring is a little bit wonky like i do like the concept um, you know, you're never out of the game because you can always just jump over somebody. Uh, but towards the end of the game, when you get to scoring and you get higher than 16, it's like, do, do we just keep going up? Or is everybody who's an ultimate spy win? Or how's that work? It, yeah, it feels a little bit wonky. It's not a deal breaker, though. And any other cons I have of the game? No, no. Moving on to the pros. Uh, I think it's good. It's a good game. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's spectacular. I think it's a good family game. The kids I played it with really, really liked the game. They did. But... As we all know, kids are all about, you know, new stuff, cool stuff, shiny stuff. And this does some really cool ideas, and it has some really cool ideas. And that's probably the best thing I can say about this game, is that they came at this swinging, and I appreciate that. You know, it, they could have just settled with the top secret spy flashlight and said, and look, they didn't even mention that on the front. Well, they kind of did a little bit, but the top secret spy flashlight is a really cool concept, and the kids love doing that. They, like, they like all secretly get up behind it and be like, oh, yeah, I know this, and you don't know this, I know this. And they thought that was really cool. And your kids will probably think that's really cool, too. And I'll be honest with you, when I first did it, I was like, eh, that's, that's kind of cool. It is a neat gimmick in the game. But they were like, we're not stopping at one gimmick. We want to put two gimmicks in there with the text messaging. And from the way it sounds, it sounds really cool. Like, if it happens to be your turn when one of these four text messages comes up, you read the text message and, and it impacts the game. And that sounds like a really cool concept. Now, it's more randomness in the game, but honestly, with a game like Clue, you kind of expect randomness. Because remember... For those of you who are still wearing the, uh, you know, the nostalgia glasses on, I reviewed the original Clue. Not the best game, uh, because the, primarily because of the dice roll. The dice rolling, you know, if you roll the one, you're not going to move much. If you roll a six, then you're you're, you're going to move a whole bunch. At least this one has some randomness that's a little bit neater than just rolling dice. So, I, they came at it from really cool ideas, and I appreciate that. I love it when game companies try different things, even if it doesn't succeed. Which I'm assuming this one did not succeed that well, because I've never heard of it before. Uh, even though it does have some really cool ideas. 
Uh, the game itself, though, is largely unforgettable. Uh, largely forgettable, not largely unforgettable. Um, you know, it's just moving around a board, shuffling around some items, and trying to score some points. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, in the end, Clues, Secrets, and Spies. Can I recommend it? Not really. There's other better games out there. Uh, there's better Clue games out there as well. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on it, but it's the one that has, like, a really big box. And it's actually, like, a, a really cool hidden movement game. I like that one better. I think I do like this better than the original Clue by a little bit. Uh, and I got another Clue up here. I'm excited to check out Clue Mysteries. But in the end, Clues, Secrets, and Spies, only if you're a collector can I really recommend this. Just because, just because. Even though I will say that Spy Flashlight, if you can get this for, like, 50 cents uh, or a dollar, and you you have, like, you know how to make, like, the mystery ink, the Spy Flashlight is a really nice Spy Flashlight. Uh, Component-wise, I don't think I mentioned the components. Components are really nice in this game. Um, all the pieces are really good. So in the end, Clue, Secrets, and Spies. I thought it was good. I, I, I don't think anything else. Good. Not really one I can recommend. This is one I'm going to be giving away to one of the kids in my classroom, and they are going to be freaking out when they see it up there. They're going to be trying to be all suck up to me like, Mr. Forrest, I just swept the floor. Because how that works is when they clip up off the chart, which literally only happens like once a week maybe, they can either gain a prize or a game, and the game is normally one of these old games that I think is good or bad, but not great. So, uh, yeah. One of the kids are going to be super excited to take this one home. But there you go. Rambling here. Clues, Secrets, and Spies. Good. Not great. Not one I can really recommend unless you can find it for dirt cheap and then just have the flashlight because the flashlight's kind of cool. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or the comments below. Let me know when is the last time you got a text message. You know what? That's a dumb one. Uh, what is the last Hidden Gem TV show you watch? TV show or movie? Uh, and yeah, actually, this one is, is a right now for me. I am currently watching a TV show, I think from the early 2000s or mid 2000s or late 2000s, uh, hell of I know, called Harper's Island, which was on like broadcast TV. And it's about this, it's a murder mystery. It's like a whodunit murder mystery type of thing about this wedding with these really rich people on this island. And I really am digging it. It's got some cheesy moments here and there, but it's a really well done show. One I wish that uh, would have got picked up and they would have done some more uh, stuff on it because I really am digging it right now. And if you have Amazon Prime, highly recommend checking out Harper's Island. Um, really, really good. I'm eight episodes in. Loving it. Loving it. I'm actually going to go watch an episode after this while I'm editing these videos. But let me know in the comments below. What is the last TV show or movie that was a hidden gem for you? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.